So recently the 2022 league tables for universities got released by the Complete University Guide and today we're going to be reacting to those league tables. So it's become a bit of a theme in recent months that I react to university rankings, do tier lists for university degrees and all stuff like that. And I just want to say that in the upcoming months, don't worry, the vlogs are coming back, the aim of buying a house within a year is coming back, a camper van is going to be bought and many other cool things like that all in the vlogs. So the vlogs are coming back but today again we're reacting to the university league tables and rankings 2022. So every single year these rankings get released and often there's quite a few similarities in these rankings. You've got the top top universities in the UK, Cambridge, Oxford, St Andrews, Imperial, Durham. They always seem to be around the top eight universities in the UK. And then if you head all the way down to the bottom, you've kind of got these other universities like Bedfordshire, Ravensbourne, that quite frankly always rank near the bottom. And these university rankings are helpful in deciding what university you want to go to because you wouldn't actively choose to go to a university that's ranked last if you got the grades to get into a top university and if you're at or if you've been to university you always want to see where your university's ranking because obviously if you go to a uni and you go there when it's like first in the UK and by the time you've left it's last you'd want a £27,000 refund and your degree's probably going to carry a bit less credibility. So yeah, I'm Dylan. I studied three years economics at the University of York. I graduated last year, 2020. Still no ceremony because Corona, still no ceremony this year because Corona, but anyway. And I'm currently doing a master's in acting, made a huge switch from economics to acting because why not? And currently I'm at a drama school called Aura. So if you're interested in drama, money, trading, traveling, caravans, buying a house, university rankings, you're in the right place. But last year I made a video reacting to the 2021 Complete University Guide League Tables and everybody came at me in the comments saying Complete University Guide League Tables, they're not the one. Use QS. So there's always going to be a bit of a tension. tension, tension around what university rankings are the best and most accurate. And quite frankly I'd say that none of these are the most accurate. I made a video where me and you guys in the live stream ranked the universities. I'd say that's the most accurate, but let's take a look at 2021 Complete University Guide rankings, just so we can refresh and then compare with 2022. And also guys, I've got a video coming out next week where I'm gonna be reviewing a really popular university. So subscribe, and, it, and it's a vlog. I'm on campus, I'm touring it. It's gonna be a good one. So if this video gets to 200 likes, I'll be releasing that university tour video within the next week. All right, so I've pulled up the 2021 rankings and we had that Cambridge was first, followed by Oxford, St Andrews, London School of Economics, Imperial, Loughborough, Durham, Lancaster, Bath and UCL as the top 10. So in a second, we're reacting to 2022. We're going to see what's changed. It's going to be an interesting one because, you know, the world's a changing place. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a lot of differences today. So let's jump into it. And if you're looking for a student vlogs phone wallet, perfect for when the clubs reopen. They'll be linked in the description down below. They're one pound. You store your cards, your money, train tickets, all of that cool stuff inside it, attached to your phone. Don't need to take a wallet or a handbag. It's all in one place. For a quid, these things are a bargain. Oh. Okay, so as you can see right now, we're on the league tables 2022. I hope you feel well taken care of on the channel. Let's react to the, to the top universities in the UK. So the best university according to the Complete University Guide in 2022 is the University of Oxford up one place from last year, meaning that Cambridge is probably going to be in number two. If Cambridge isn't number two, it's going to be a very, very big revelation. Yep, Cambridge comes in at number two. As I said, it's always a battle between University and Oxford and Cambridge of what ranks first. I'd be interested to see as well the actual reasoning for Cambridge falling down a spot, but Cambridge at number two with two very high, high, high uh, overall scores. But scrolling down, number three, London School of Economics takes third spot this time with St Andrews coming in at fourth. St Andrews down a place, London School of Economics up a place. I've been to Cambridge, should I just say, Cambridge was a very nice place. There's so many tech firms around there, campus was nice, and it was just all around good vibes. I feel like when you know you're in a place of high intelligence, you just feel smarter. So Cambridge, I'm liking that. London School, uh, London School of Economics, got plenty of friends that go there. They say it's super hard. It's the University of St Andrews, where Prince William and Kate Middleton met. I like the idea a lot of going to university in Scotland. Fifth to 10th, we have Durham, Imperial, Loughborough, UCL, Bath, Warwick. Durham, collegiate system. Big fan of collegiate systems. That's down, us up two places. Imperial down a place, Loughborough down a place, with UCL up two places, Bath stays the same and Warwick up a place. So we can see that there's no real breakthroughs into the top 10 universities in the UK. Warwick does by one place, 
but there's no real major movers this year compared to last year. We were roughly expecting everything to stay similar. Obviously, since I went to University of York, I'm very keen to see where that lies. University of Exeter as well, I'm very keen to see where that is. And the same for St Mary's, because my drama school is affiliated to St Mary's University, even though they're completely different institutions. Lancaster falls out of the top 10, going down to 11th. Exeter stays number 12, with Edinburgh and Southampton up two and three places respectively. I would have thought Edinburgh would have been higher. I, I love Edinburgh in terms of what well, I think I do. I've never actually been, so that's a bold statement, but going on a Scotland road trip hopefully sometime soon, it's all booked. Edinburgh is a place on the hit list. Maybe I'll do a university review, but I feel like just the idea of going to Scotland to do university, I don't know what it is, it seems cool. Whenever I tell my friends Edinburgh, they get excited, and they get excited because University of Southampton, my mate goes there, he got a job at the ground flipping burgers when it was open, that's up three. Manchester, Glasgow, Bristol, York up four places, there we are, York breaks into the top 20 according to this ranking this year, coming in at number 18. So my university, where my degree's from, has got a 78% score, it's pretty decent. Great ad graduate prospects and 80%, I'll take a, a little 80% there, hopefully my prospects are good. Birmingham falling down, probably with the biggest mover so far, down six places. Now the, the reason for that, who knows? You just don't know. Then you've got the likes of Leeds coming in down four places to 20th. That's a surprise to see Leeds almost pushing out the top 20 because of how popular the university is. Nightlife there slaps, been there several times, made vlogs on it, drum and bass, warehouse raves, you know, it's, that's, the, that's the big scene that everybody goes for, I believe. Birmingham, I'm yet to, if you haven't been, Birmingham haven't been there again, a few friends go there. There's a big clock tower there that everybody takes nice pictures of and posts on their story and on their main feed. That is my extent of knowledge to Birmingham University, the clock tower. Big, it's not Big Ben. Is it called Joe? I don't know what it's called. Hmm. So moving into 20 to 30, there, there seems to be no massive movers except University of Essex up 16 places. That is a very, very big leap. That's, that is huge. And the same for Harper Adams University. I've never heard of Harper Adams in my life, the university, but it is making some big moves. So having a little Google at Harper Adams University, it's founded in 1901, been around for absolutely ages. Taking a look at where it is on the map, well, the campus looks nice in that photo, and it's, and it's north of Birmingham on the border of Wales in Newport. So that's done very well. Speaking of Wales, Swansea, Swansea up to 29th, apparently fantastic beaches, barbecue vibes there often. Some other notable names there, Surrey staying at 34th, not ideal. Dundee up, Liverpool the same, Royal Holloway down eight places, not ideal. Newcastle down 14 places. That I think for the, for the popularity of Newcastle to go down to 37th, isn't it a Russell group as well? That's not, that's not ideal. You don't want to see a Russell group university being at 37th. Queen Mary, Aston, and then you kind of fall into the middle tier universities. You've got Coventry, you've got SOAS down 16, that's not ideal as well. Bristol, Aberystwyth, I guess that's in Wales. Bournemouth down 10. Brunel up 23. I always think Brunel, especially because of my area, I know loads of people that go there. Apparently, facilities there are quite good. Hull down six places. Chichester, Plymouth down 12. So, you know, you can really see how, in essence, things are the same. Brighton's up 29. I think Brighton's got a great appeal to it being by the beach and so on. Taking a look at the bottom universities in the UK, you've got East London, Glendalough, Ravensbourne and Bedfordshire. Again, bottom universities in the UK, you know, that apparently they don't compare to the top ones. But I do wonder if the quality between uh, the University of Oxford, top ranked, and University of Bedfordshire, bottom ranked, is worthy of 69%. Would I feel 69% difference in, uh, in quality, who knows. You know it would be an interesting system, you pay tuition fees based on the quality. So like, the, t the most you can pay is 10,000 pounds, and that'll be for like the best university in the UK, let's say Oxford, and then if uh, other universities were half as good, then you pay half. If they're a fifth as good, then you pay a fifth of the tuition fees. That'd be an interesting metric, I don't know if it'd work, but let me know what you think. Leeds Trinity crashing down, University of Bucking, Buckingham, so there's 130 universities in the UK. The Open University is not there. I'd be very interested to see where that university lies within our rankings again. But yeah, there you have it guys. There's been a few surprises in these rankings and I feel like, again, obviously year on year, change is a slow and steady thing. Changes happen over time. But if we head over to the full table, again, we can see 
more of the metrics. So these ranks are based on entry standards, they're based on student satisfaction, research quality and student satisfaction is always biased, research quality, intensity, academic services, facilities, degree completion, student to staff ratio, graduate prospects, graduate prospects on track. Student to staff ratio, it sounds like a good thing in theory, right? But I guarantee there could have been about a thousand teachers at my university and I guarantee that whenever I went into office hours, not all the time, but often it felt like they're just trying to get you in and out. I reckon this doesn't always matter about, you know, the student to staff ratio. It matters about the person behind that. You know what I'm saying? If they're willing to give you time and stuff like that. So yeah, obviously the best student to staff ratio. University of Bath's got a solid 15. York's got a solid 13. Degree completion. I wonder what the lowest degree completion is. Surely it can't be lower than 70%. London Metropolitan University has a 68% degree completion rate. That is horrendous. How can you have that many people drop out? There's 65% of Suffolk. What on earth is going on there? 53% of Bedfordshire. That is that is appalling. I never even realised that people... How can you have... A, imagine making a group of 12 friends at uni, like my friends, and half of them dropping out. Statistically, half the people at Bedfordshire drop out. That's horrendous. No wonder they're last on the list. No one finishes the degree. So obviously I'm in the edit and I just wanted to say that people drop out of uni for many different reasons. Sometimes out of their control, sometimes financially, sometimes other problems. I don't want to take away from that in this video. I was just surprised. What's their student satisfaction? It's got to be like 1%. It's got a 79% student satisfaction, except 47% of the students drop out. Something just doesn't add up there. And I think that's the same for a lot of universities, right? But essentially that's why the big boys like Cambridge, Cambridge and Oxford don't do their student satisfaction survey because they think it's biased. And, le and let me say as well, guys, like these rankings, rankings are good, but if you go to the best university in the UK and you don't put in work, you'll get nowhere. If you go to the bottom university in the UK, but you graft, if you graft, you'll make it places, you'll do bits. It's not always about the ranking, it's always about the person behind it. Yes, if you go to Cambridge and there's better teachers and facilities and all stuff like that, the vehicle that's gonna take you and drive you forward in life is gonna be a Lamborghini. If you go to Bedfordshire, it's going to be a garbage bin. But a garbage bin still goes forward. You know what I'm saying? For an analogy, yeah, yeah. Jeez, what an analogy that was. Fantastic, eh? But that has been the university rankings in 2022. We focused on the top 20. We've seen some big surprises, some other ones that we weren't too surprised by. But again, rankings don't matter. Just go to the best university go to the university that feels right to you. I've always said university is mainly about the experience for me, and I went where I felt happiest, which obviously ties into, you know, going to a better university, because I feel like going to a good university made me a tiny bit, you know, more happier. But thank you so much for watching today's video. Please do leave a like on this video. Let's get it to as many likes as we can. I'd appreciate it a lot. Let me know if you're going to any of these universities here, if you're at them, or if you completely disagree with these rankings, because they are not always right. Our rankings that we made were completely different. So remember, subscribe for plenty of vlogs, plenty of cool stuff coming soon. And as soon as I graduate drama school, this channel is going straight to the moon. No doubt about it. I, it's going to be a big time for the channel. But yeah, take care, guys. Subscribe. All up in my head, that's how I behave. Passing up the same, waking up the same. All up in my head, that's just how I behave. Yeah